there guys, it is Mo and I just wanted to make this quick video to share with you some strategies and tips to help you succeed in distance learning. I've been getting quite a few emails and direct messages and pleas for help from those of you that maybe aren't used to distance learning. Maybe you're brand new to your nursing school program and just that on top of acclimating to learning in an online environment is really overwhelming. So I want to apologize for any background power tools. My husband is building a deck today, but I do want to wait to make this video um, for him to stop. So here I am and we're going to be talking about two, three, four, five, seven tips. And I'm going to be looking down a lot because I have notes and let's just start with tip number one. These are going to be organization, separation, concentration, preparation, motivation, socialization, and rejuvenation. So we're gonna do all of those things and it will create a whole package that hopefully will help you thrive with online distance education. Okay, so the first one is organization. I think that's probably the hardest one for students to get their brains wrapped around and really get into the flow of things. So the first thing that you have to take into consideration when you're organizing yourself for distance learning is are your classes synchronous or asynchronous? Synchronous classes mean that you meet online via Zoom or some kind of teleconferencing material with your professor and your classmates at the same time, you're all there together. Some of the benefits of synchronous education online are that you might be able to break out and do groups and do small group projects together. Um, the professor is there to answer questions in real time. So as far as distance learning goes, a synchronous class is going to be the closest to what you're used to when you're when you were going to class and sitting in a lecture. However, a lot of classes can also be asynchronous, meaning the professor puts the material up and you have a certain amount of time, a week or two or three, to get to the module and complete it. Now, ideally, it will be dated you know, with a clear indication of what each week is happening. But most professors, in my experience, will open up the material maybe two, sometimes even three weeks prior, maybe not, maybe just that week. So you need to know what your professors are doing and how they're managing this. But asynchronous means that you're going to go through the material at your own pace on your own schedule. There will not be anybody there online with you as you're doing this. So asynchronous is a little bit harder for students to get organized, stay motivated, and learn because it is self-guided and you have to really take ownership even more with asynchronous. So I'm hoping some of your classes are synchronous, if not all, but if you do have asynchronous, you can still manage. So something that you absolutely have to do with online distance education is you guys, you have to take your schedule very seriously. You need to plan out your time just like you would be if you were going to class, going to campus every single day. So whether you use the planners that I create or you make one of your own or you find something else that you really like, it doesn't matter as long as you use something. The key to a successful planning system is just actually using it. So go through with your planner, Mark out each week what synchronous classes you have. And then you also want to look at the whole big picture. What big projects do you have? When are they due? When are your exams? Um, do you have group projects, papers, whatever they are? Write down the due dates. You will probably have discussion board posts a lot. One of the things with distance education where instructors will try to get students to um, interact with one another is through discussion board posts, especially with asynchronous classes. So if you're not sure what that is because you haven't had it yet, typically the instructor will present a topic and you need to go do a little research, do some reading, and then go onto the discussion board and write something. And then your classmates will have to, they'll read through responses and then you will do the same with your classmates and then you have to respond to a certain number of people and you can't just say oh that sounds great you have to actually contribute and add something to the conversation so you need to be writing down what days your discussion board posts are due what days your replies are due how many 
all of the requirements so that you basically have your whole semester kind of mapped out in your planner. And then every week before you start your, your school week, for me, it was always Sunday nights that I would do this as I would plan out the week. So you've already got in your calendar the synchronous meetings if you're having those. And then you have to take a look at your asynchronous classes and block out time, like block out a few hours at a time to really dive into each class. Okay, so um, the general rule of thumb for how much time to anticipate spending on each class is two to three hours per credit hour of the class. So if you're in a four hour credit class, then you will be spending eight to 12 hours a week on that class and studying, doing coursework, doing prep for projects, for discussion boards, actually viewing the material, etc. So plan out enough time, okay? And then um, one of the things that I would recommend you do with your classes is if you have a class that is more challenging for you, everybody knows what time of day they're most alert and ready and raring to go. If it's an asynchronous class and it's really hard for you, like pharmacology is a really hard class and it would be especially hard to learn asynchronously and some of you will be doing that. Maybe that's the class that you do first thing in the morning when you're raring to go or if you're more focused and energetic in the afternoon. So figure out how you can maximize your own um, strengths to tackle things that might be a little bit more challenging, okay? Um, and then another thing that you can do, you guys, is you can arrange to do your asynchronous work at the same time as a friend so that you're both there for each other to assist one another and help one another and provide support and resources. So find a friend and maybe say, okay, we're gonna work on our farm stuff on Fridays from 8 a.m. to noon and that will be our pharmacology time and we can support one another in that. Okay, and then um, another thing that you can do with your plan or with your scheduling, I'm a big fan of to-do lists, you guys. So every week I write down all the things that I have to do. And when I was uh, an undergrad nursing student, that would be every quiz, every project, every discussion board post, every assignment, every reading, everything was in a list. And the planners that I create and sell through my website have this in there, but you can just make your own list and then you can really see what you have to do. And I just love checking things off a list, you guys. That's just, that's just my love language right there. And then the other thing with your schedule is blocking out time for big things. And that, by big things, I mean exams and projects and papers. So if you know you've got an eight page paper due in a couple of weeks, then you know you need to block out a certain amount of time to get that done so that you're not scrambling the day before it's due to try to throw together a coherent paper. Or if you're studying for an exam, you need to block out time to do that studying so you're not cramming the night before. I'm not a big fan of any of that. Okay, so that's organization, you guys. That was the big one. That was the most important one. That's the one that people, I think, have the hardest time with. So I hope that helps. The next thing that you can do for success, setting yourself up for success with distance learning is separation. And by that, I mean, if you can find a way to create a specific study space for yourself, then please do that. Um, if you're used to doing your homework in bed, sprawled out on the sofa, that's not gonna work because you're going to be doing everything at home. So if you can just even just get a small table or a part of the dining room table, or maybe you get a cheap desk off Craigslist and put it in the spare bedroom or wherever, if you can have a designated study schoolwork area, that's going to help you a lot. And that also will help you with your organization because then you're not having to put your things away if um, let's say you, you are using um, your bed or the dining room table, moving everything and then moving it back and et cetera, et cetera. Things get lost, get out of order, all of that. So if you can get a desk or some kind of little table set up where you dedicate that space to schoolwork, that is the absolute best. And then the other thing I want you to separate is your school time versus your home time. So it's very important. Part of that organization is, you know, set an end time for yourself every day. Um, if you know that you are beat by 6 p.m., don't schedule yourself to do things after 6 p.m. unless maybe you have a synchronous class that you need to log in for. But set a stop time and then have 
something like I like to have an end of day routine where kind of signals the end of my work day. You know, for me, that's closing down my browsers and clearing up my desk and maybe one more check of my email and then closing the computer and then walking away. Like something that signifies I'm done with school and now I'm going to go binge watch the office or whatever it is that you guys like to do. So the problem with not having a separation is that it can feel like school is always there. This is a problem that people that work from home have. Like I work from home a lot and it can be very hard to feel that separation and to um, feel like your home time is your downtime. You always feel like you're at work or you're at school. So I want you to have that separation for your own well-being and joy. Okay, the next part, third, uh, the third part is concentration. This one's also really hard for people that might not be used to having that self-motivation to study kind of on their own. So you really have to be able to give your coursework your undivided attention, you guys. You are learning a ton of material in nursing school and some of it is very complex and very difficult and you really need to be able to focus. So you're not going to have an instructor there with you holding your attention necessarily all the time like you're used to. So um, discipline is really going to come into key here. So one thing that you can do is remove distractions. I'm really guilty of putting on Netflix while I'm doing schoolwork. So I kind of have some background noise and something to keep me mildly entertained. If I'm working on something that doesn't take a ton of brain power, I will do that. Um, but I'm going to advise against that, you guys. So get rid of TV from your study area. Try to remove distractions. If you have kids, can you arrange for somebody else to be um, minding them while you're doing your schoolwork? Um, again, having that separate space is really going to help with that. And then very easy with online distance learning. You're on your computer already. Very easy to quickly jump over to Facebook or wherever, Twitter or whatever, to see what's happening. Try to really limit that set. Um, Try to set some parameters with yourself for how often you will engage in things that can really eat up your time. And for you know a lot of us, that's social media or YouTube or whatever it is, your email. Just try to really be aware of setting limits on that so that you can concentrate and focus. You want to make sure that you have a space where you can really hear your computer audio well. Maybe you need to get earbuds or headphones or something so that when you are listening to your lectures, you can really hear them and stay focused and not getting distracted by other things that are happening out there. And then I want to share with you a great tip. So I have this app called Focus Keeper, you guys. You can kind of see. Oops, it turned. Sorry. Let me see. Um, can you see? It's right there and then what it is is you can set a um i don't know why it's messing up now i was going to show it to you but i'll just explain it set little timers for yourself so let's say you can set a 50 minute timer and then it'll give you like a five minute break and then another you know whatever length of time you want to have for your focused work and then little break little break and then every so often you get a longer break so you can set it up for that and that's really helpful too because a lot of times I am really guilty of this where I will just sit down and nose to the grindstone and before I know it, five hours have gone by and I haven't taken a single break. And that's not good for me and it's not good for you either. So if you really want to stay focused, maybe having shorter intervals where you can stay focused but also giving yourself that break to just step away, breathe, and just take Okay, just take a moment, guys. All right, so then the next part of our strategy for success is preparation. So something that somebody in my Facebook group might have asked, I can't remember, if, I think that's where it was, asked if, if people doing distance learning were still studying for exams as so they were going to the testing center at their school. And the answer is yes, you definitely still want to study for your exams, even online exams with open book, you still have to study. I can tell you that I've done multiple classes that were open book online versus going to a, a, you know, a testing room and taking the computer test at the school. And I have to say the open book online exams are 
way harder. I think the professors write the questions harder because they know you're going to have the benefit of being able to look things up. When I, I'm in my graduate program now, I'm almost done. I'm like weeks away from being done. But I took an advanced pharmacology course that was top, all open book, all online. But those exam questions were killer. And if I hadn't studied and prepared and done the reading and watched the lectures, I would have been absolutely sunk. So you guys still need to study and prepare for your exams because a, even if your exam is online, the open book, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're proctored on, um, someone will watch you via a webcam, which is, I realize sounds kind of creepy, but they can be proctored in that way. And then when you take your NCLEX, NCLEX, that's the ultimate exam. You need to be in that mode of studying and practicing exam questions and performing to that high level. So definitely study, prepare for your exams. Some students I've heard have been doing their skills checkoffs by videotaping themselves, performing a skill, and then the professor watches the video and approves it that way. So you still need to practice for those things just so that you are really giving your all. Okay, the next component of our strategies for success is motivation. So a lot of students are having a hard time staying motivated. I think a lot of us are really sad that we don't have face-to-face -face classes right now and there's just a lot of stress around that and it's really hard to stay motivated. So I want you to just take a moment, think about your why. Think about why you're doing this, why you're going through this. You've already gone through so much to get to this point, right? You got through all your prerequisites and that is no joke. That was hard and took a ton of dedication. So you have a reason. So I want you to just stay really motivated for what that is. If you need to write it down on a, on a post-it note and stick it on your computer or somewhere in your office or on your bathroom mirror, just some way so that you can stay motivated. And then another quick way to keep your motivation up is to have goals for, you know, each week or each um, term, each course, whatever it is, make some goals and then work to reach them. And then give yourself a little high five, some kind of reward for actually meeting them. So staying motivated, very important. And we're down to our final two. So the next to last one is socialization. So even though everybody's apart and learning distantly, um, we can still socialize and still feel like we are part of a group. So something that you could do is you could set up a Facebook group for your cohort so that you guys have a quick, easy way to interact with one another. You could, um, make little small study groups with other friends. Maybe you meet on Google Hangouts or you FaceTime each other while you're studying. You can quiz each other and watch each other practicing skills and critique each other and provide feedback in that way. You could um, even just, I think Google Hangouts, you can have up to 25 people. Maybe you have a happy hour every Friday at 4.30 and you just hang out and talk about stuff that's not school and get to know one another and enjoy just some social interaction, something that's not school related, but you're still connecting with your, your, school, your school friends. And then the final part of our strategies for success for distance learning is rejuvenation. So it's really important that you guys rest and renew. As I mentioned before, it can be really hard to have that separation between school and home so that you run the risk of always feeling like you're at school. You're always studying, you always have your school stuff there. So if you have that separation, if you have that organized schedule and clear boundaries, you can really set yourself up for some rejuvenation, resting and renewing, time to recharge your batteries. Um, it's important to have something to look forward to. Um, I, you know, nursing school's really busy, I'm not gonna lie, even, it's still gonna be really busy for you guys, but, um, Every Sunday night, I would read trash, <laughs> a trashy book. Um, for me, it's always like a murder mystery, something like that. But that was my routine. On Sunday nights, I would get in the tub with a glass of wine and some kind of just no-brainer book to read. And that was just my little something to look forward to every week. So it wasn't a big thing. It didn't really cost any money. It was just something that I did that I enjoyed and it was my downtime. So you absolutely should plan things like that so that you do have some downtime. It's important to get outside, get outdoors when you can, um, get regular exercise. 
Um, especially, you know, there's like free videos for any kind of exercise you could ever think of. Yoga, dance, um, weights, body weight, you don't even need any equipment for. Um, I have a Peloton. I ride my Peloton and I meet my friends online to ride together. There's yoga apps, I think I mentioned. Just all kinds of things that you could do exercise-wise to keep yourself healthy if you're not able to go to the gym and that's what you're used to. So again, you guys, I just wish you the very best. I do have some resources for you on my website. I will link to that. It's straightanursingstudent.com. There's a ton of stuff there. If you haven't been introduced to my website yet, that's where you go when you're looking for a specific topic, something in nursing school, maybe a concept that you're having trouble with. Chances are I've written about it already. I also have a podcast, Straight A Nursing. Great pop pop a podcast episode on put your earbuds in and go outside for a walk or whatever and just learn while you're you know doing something else while you're doing the laundry. I always like to encourage people to make the most of their time and especially getting outdoors and exercising is really important. I also again like I said I have planners for nursing students. I would go grab one, but it's they're buried over there somewhere. Planners for nursing students. I will link to that as well. And then for students that are just starting your programs, I do have an online course called Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, and that is open for enrollment at various times of the year. So I will provide the link for that as well. And if you're a brand new student, this is how you can really um, start your program really strong with those crucial concepts under your belt. Okay, you guys, I... Still hearing a lot of noise from my husband. I'm going to go check on the deck. I hope that helped you and I really wish you the very best of luck. If you're not in the Facebook group, come join Thriving Nursing Students and maybe we'll talk more about thriving in distance education over there as well. Okay, bye.